Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Retaking the Nation. And today we've got a 2024 Senate prediction map here. We're going to be predicting all of the Senate seats coming up. Obviously, 2022 has just ended. There's a lot we don't know about what's going to happen in 2024. Who's at the top of the ticket makes a big difference depending on some of these Senate races. So that, that will play a role in how the map will turn out. But it's never too early just to give a little preliminary prediction here. If you're new to the channel, you should hit subscribe like the video down below and hit that bell so you know that when we upload, that would be great. And you can follow the Twitter account, retaking underscore nation, and you can find that in the description box. Okay, let's get into the Senate prediction here. So this is the 2024 Senate map. Uh, a quick disclaimer, there are three independents technically uh, for re-election. We've got Angus King, we've got Bernie Sanders, and we've got Kirsten Cinema. I have them all, or I should say, I will be classifying them as Democrats if they win, because I'm pretty sure Kirsten Cinema is going to be caucusing with the Democrats. Angus King and Bernie Sanders already do. So yes, technically, there are uh, 48 Democratic senators, but really, there's 51. I just want to make that quick disclaimer here. we we'll also be using this map to help us figure out what maybe some of the margins will be like. I'll be using the, the color grade there. So let's start off with what I think will probably be the safe states. So we've got Washington, we've got California. Um, we've got some of the red ones here. Tennessee, Mississippi, Missouri, both Nebraska Senate seats, Wyoming. We'll get to Montana later, obviously. Utah, we've got Hawaii here. Um, Virginia could be an interesting one. I'm not going to put that one there. Maryland, Delaware, yes, New Jersey, even New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, and Maine. And then also on the Republican side, we've got North Dakota. And with Amy Klobuchar running the electoral juggernaut in Minnesota, uh, I don't think there's a chance she gets defeated there. I'm going to be putting that in the safe category there as well. So this is a little better look at what the safe map is. 47 Republican seats, 41 Democratic seats. And this is a good idea of uh, you know, what the map's going to look like. The Republicans obviously have a big advantage coming into this one. I mean, we remember the 2018 Senate elections. That was a very favorable map for Republicans to pick up some seats. This is another favorable map uh, for Republicans this time. So let's start off with what I think will be some of the more likely seats. We're going to go with Texas. I'm going to put that as likely Republican. In a national election year, I mean, Texas is sort of trending back. It's kind of turned a corner, even with Ted Cruz. Beto work was kind of seen as moderate enough in 2018. It was a blue wave. There was a lot of things that came together that allowed him to get within three points. I don't think that's going to happen this time. I think Ted Cruz will probably win by six or seven points in this case. If we go to Florida with Rick Scott, he could win by a safe margin. It's very possible at this point with Florida's trends. Um, but I'm just going to say maybe eight to nine for now. But like I said, uh, it is a definite possibility. Um, that he wins by a, a close to a safe margin. So now we're, we're already at 49 Republican seats. Um, and if we go to the Rust Belt here, I do believe Michigan and Pennsylvania are going to be in the likely column. Pennsylvania could even be in the lean column, depending on who runs. Uh, you know, Pennsylvania, we've got some problems at the statewide level. and We've got, uh, you know, not a very deep bench when it comes to Pennsylvania for the Senate. Um, you know, we had Sharn Parnell. He was going to be a good candidate. Well, he had some issues. He had to drop out. Dr. Oz kind of got blown out because of rural turnout. I think if Trump's at the top of the ticket and we have a good candidate in Pennsylvania, it could even be tilt. But winning the Senate race there, I just don't know. I'm just not convinced yet um, in the Rust Belt. And I do think Michigan, it, it could be a likely victory, even with Trump uh, at the top of the ticket there. Now, if we go to Virginia, this is another one where it depends on who runs. If Glenn Youngkin runs for the seat, we could see maybe a lean margin, four or five points, hung cow, you know, four to five points. Anyone other than that, I think Tim Kaine beats him by a likely margin. But I'm just going to assume for the purposes of this video that Glenn Youngkin runs and maybe he loses by five. That's what I'm thinking here in Virginia. So we've got 49, 44. We've got a lot of the swing, state, uh, swing seats still remaining here. Let's go to the easiest Republican flip. No matter what Manchin does, I don't think there's any chance he survives uh, a challenge in West Virginia. He's just voted on too much leftist legislation at this point, and depending on, it doesn't really matter who you run in West Virginia. Manchin is going to lose. Could it be by a likely margin? Sure. But he barely held on in a blue wave year, and the candidate wasn't that great. If we run, you know, Jim Justice, I don't think is my number one choice, but he would win very easily in that state. So we're already at 50 Republican seats. Now, uh, New Mexico, I will fill in as likely, however, that should be a likely state. So 45, 50. And if we go to the state of Montana, 
It looks like Tester might not even run, and even if he does, I don't think he stands a chance either, especially in a national year. Now, I saw some people bringing up the fact, oh, but in um, in 2012, you know, Romney was at the top of the ticket, and Tester still won. Doesn't matter. Things are much more polarized. We saw, you know, the Democratic governor running there in Montana go down uh, a couple years ago. Uh, I just don't see it happening, so I do think that will be another flip for Republicans in this case. Uh, Nevada is an interesting one. I think that if you run Laxalt, he could get very close. It just is going to depend on what the national environment is look, looking like. With the DeSantis at the top of the ticket, it, you know, in Trump, I think it'll yield the same result at the Senate level. It will be a tight race. I'm going to put this with how the state is trending as like tilt Republican, um, just in this case here. Now, Ohio, it doesn't matter who you run here. Again, Sherrod Sh Brown, He's run in two very favorable years. Ohio is changing dramatically. Um, you know, I think lean at the at the worst for Republicans, a two to three point victory. I think something like a Vance margin would be, you know, because we got Vance and Ryan ran in uh, 2022. Obviously, this is Trump's margin of victory. If Trump's at the top of the ticket, I don't think there's any chance Brown uh, survives in that case. You, you could be looking at in that race, a Vance v. Ryan sort of margin there. But I think uh, Brown doesn't really stand a chance in this case. So we got 53 Republican seats. Now we got Arizona and Wisconsin. We got Tammy Baldwin is the incumbent in Wisconsin. Depending on who runs, Republicans may have a good shot at flipping the seat in a presidential year. I'm just not sure. This is a very toss-up seat. Incumbents did very well in 2022. So I'm going to say maybe Tammy, Tammy Baldwin by like a very tilt thin margin. This one will change over time as we figure out who maybe the candidates are going to be, et cetera. Now, Arizona, this is the most fascinating one yet. If Cinema runs as an independent, and then we have Ruben Gallego on the Democratic side, and then whoever the Republicans put up, it's going to be interesting to see how that final margin turns out. Will Cinema win over more uh, McCain independents or centrist Democrats? I'm not exactly sure, but I do know if Cinema and Gallego both run, I think it's going to be tough for the Democrats to pull out that seat. The Republicans just need to get their base out to win that one there. This is a very early projection. We still got a lot of time uh, to, f to figure out um, what's exactly going to happen in this seat. I mean, cinema might not even run. We don't exactly know what's going to happen. Whether it's Masters, Andy Biggs, Kimberly Yee, I don't know who's going to run in this state. But if they can get enough of the base out, um, they should be able to win this, the sort of split vote that's between Gallego and Cinema. So this is my prediction, 54-46. I'd say this is pretty conservative predict uh, prediction. If Republicans get their acts together in terms of, you know, utilizing the system, playing the game like the Democrats do, they could flip some of these seats like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, um, and even maybe get closer in Virginia. That's very possible. So I'd say the upward ceiling is somewhere maybe like 56-ish for Republicans if they have a really good year. If things don't go so well, maybe they don't get Nevada and Arizona. Well, I still think 52 is kind of the floor for them. They'd really, really have to screw up poorly to not win uh, West Virginia, Ohio, and Montana, which is three states that are very, very favorable for them. So let me know what you think about my prediction in the description down below. I'm very interested, or comment down below, I should say, uh, what states you think I got wrong, what states are the most interesting to you. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I will see you guys in the next video.